All right, everybody, welcome to the impromptu live stream on Wednesday. And just like the title and thumbnail suggests, we're going to dive deep. Well, just an overview of what's going on for this new law. Looks like it's US code 6050i. And there's been a lot of talk, especially about uh, in the Twitterverse and on different social media sites that this law goes into effect. And it means that if you don't report the $10,000 plus of your crypto within 15 days, you're going to face a felony charge. And uh, I didn't really know much about it. I just saw that, that was going on. So I reached out to somebody that could help me. Sheehan Chandra Zakara comes on as the crypto CPA. Sheehan, welcome back to the show for the sixth or seventh time, I think. Yeah, good to be here. Yes. So actually, like I had heard about it and then you reached out to me and I'm like, I don't know what really is going on. But before we get into, into all that stuff, uh, I just want to remind everybody that if you're watching the replay, just know that there's going to be a scam uh, video because that's what YouTube's all about. And it's going to be an AI video. It's going to look something ridiculous like this. It's going to be Michael Saylor. It could be any number of people that are big into the uh, in the crypto space. And they're going to say, scan this code and I will give, if you send me one Bitcoin, I'll send you two. Newsflash, that is not reality. What is reality, unfortunately, is tax codes. And this is everybody's favorite subject, taxes, I'm sure. And this was actually what was uh, sent to me. This is Ryan Sean Adams and uh, over the over there at uh, one of the duo for Bankless. And he states, if you're a U.S. citizen and get $10,000 or more in crypto, you have to report to the IRS within 15 days or they can charge you with a felony. Felony. That starts today. They want your name, your address, your social security number of the sender, and they're not telling you how to file the report, which I got to be honest with you. It's very easy to pile on the government, especially when we see stuff like this. And also, I saw the same thing from uh, Jerry Brito. He is the executive director of Coin Center, DC-based crypto think tank. And he says the exact same thing. If you receive 10K or more and you don't report it uh, within 15 days, you get a felony charge. So I reached out to Sheehan and, and I was like, is this true? Because if it is, I'm in big trouble. And he said, no. So let's go over this 6050i code and what this really means. Sheehan, it's up to you. Cool. Um, so I guess let's start with the current law, right? So basically the 6050i uh, code section of the IRS says that if you run a trade or business in simple terms of business, um, okay. uh, and if you receive paper cash in excess of $10,000 in a transaction, let's say, for example, I go to a dealership, mm -hmm. uh, like a car dealer, um, instead of cutting a check or giving my bank account information, I just give them, uh, you know, $20,000 worth of paper cash in a duffel bag and buy a car. Oh, sounds good. That's what I do. <laughs> if, if that were to happen, the dealership has to collect my personally identified information, meaning my social security, name, address, and et cetera, uh -huh. and file a tax form called Form 8300 with the IRS and the FinCEN. So that is the rule. Okay. And you might ask why people, why we have this rule. It's to combat against, um, you know, money laundering, tourist financing, uh, mm -hmm. because otherwise, you know, the, you know, you can earn, you know, money to illegal means and, and kind of convert it to goods and services uh, without, you know, uh, without being caught. So that's the idea behind this existing laws that applicable to cash transactions. Okay. So let me get this straight. So what you said, so I go into the dealership and I want an upgrade for my 2018 Dodge Grand Caravan minivan, which is a sweet ride, I must I must tell you. Very good in gas mileage, very great in space. And uh, I come in there with the $23,000 that it costs. And the dealership, Dick Poe Toyota in El Paso, Texas, or wherever else, or, or, or Hyundai here in Puerto Rico, they say, hey, uh, you just gave us all this money. We need to collect a bunch of information from you because we don't want to be held responsible for your money laundering activity, which we're not saying you do, but if you are, we have your information and we can report it. So that has always been in effect. Is that correct? That, that is right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now let's flip it on its head and talk about this new rule because has this law been in effect, the 6050i, and there's been some changes to it to include virtual currencies? Yeah, exactly. So the 6050i has been in effect for a number of years, uh, but a lot of people don't encounter this because not many people carry that much cash and, and buy like, you know, goods and services. So yeah. what happened in 2021 was that infrastructure bill passed. And mm -hmm. as a result, uh, they subjected digital assets to 6050i regulations. So going back to our example, 
instead of me giving cash to the dealership, if I give like one Bitcoin and buy a car worth, you know, you know, $50,000 or so, now the dealership has to collect my information uh, and file that form 8300 with the IRS and the FinCEN. So that, that's the, the change that happened. And of course, when we're talking about a felony charge, this isn't for the individual. Let's just say, okay, let's take this example. So the same example as well. And I'm like, hey, I've got a bunch of uh, Dogecoin and I want to buy that Dodge Grand Caravan. So I'm going to give this to you. Do you have a wallet? And they say, yeah, you know, for some reason, they're like, yes, we, we love Dogecoin here at the dealership. You give them Dogecoin and they don't collect any information from me. If they do that, then it's it's on them as the business owner, correct? It's not on me as the one who actually spent that crypto. That That is correct. Great. So now all I got to do, you're telling me, is I got to find somebody. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to go down that route. You, you're not, you're, you're, you're telling me I just got to find somebody who, who will accept my crypto and not ask me for any kind of paperwork. Excellent. <laughs> okay. So we have that down. It makes a lot of sense. Is that it, it to the rule? How did we... How do we get this so misconstrued? Because I've seen this in a lot of different social media platforms. And, you know, we're talking about, hey, if you get $10,000 or more, it's automatic felony within 15 days. Where do we yeah. go wrong here? Yeah, it's this key term, uh, trade of business. So in our example, the dealership is clearly running what's called a trade of business, right? You know, they're in the business of selling cars. Therefore, they have a business of selling cars. Um, so and a lot of people thought that, like, you know, this is applicable to everybody, like in, even individuals, even if you don't have a trader business. Um, and I think what I was trying to clarify on Twitter was that the 6050i, again, it applies only to trader businesses, meaning like, um, you know, you should be able to carry like some type of economic activity. It could be, you know, selling cars, um, uh, I don't know, selling something uh, as a business. If you do not do that as a business, you don't have a trade of business and therefore 6050i does not apply to you. So how does that, let's say, so any kind of transaction, let's just say it's me to you. And I'm like, hey, Shian, um, you know, thanks for, oh, I don't know, for any kind of, no, we, we can't say CPA, so we got an actual business. But I say, hey, you know, here is the $20,000 that I owe you from the bet that I lost because the Cowboys lost last week or whatever it was. If I if we did that, is there any kind of laws that say that I have to, you know, put it put in some kind of information with the IRS that I've transferred that types of funds to you? So in that case, you know, uh, uh, assuming I don't run like a professional, you know, betting right. service, I, I I don't have a trade of basis. That was just a one time receipt coming from you, mm -hmm. and I don't have any obligation. Yeah, Beautiful. excellent. Yeah. All right. So everybody, that's just what I wanted to get across. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. So like, uh, just be careful with the information that you get out there, especially on the Twitter verses and the social media sites, because uh, it's it's all about sensationalism. And even I delve in that as well. I mean, you saw the title and the thumbnail. It's to get your attention, you know, but I don't go too far to where it's like get people uh, give people heart attacks. I just want to give you the best information we possibly can. All right. So Shein, that would take care of that piece, unless there's something else that we missed. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up for, for a quick Q&A because I know you've got things going on in another 10 minutes or so. So everybody, if you want to ask Shein here, who is a certified CPA and that deals in crypto specifically, now would be the time to ask that. And uh, I got a question for Shein. What's uh, these? Are there any new laws that we're not familiar with that are coming on the pipe? that could change things. I know last time we talked, which the last video we did, I don't know if you knew that, but it had like a, it had over 150,000 views. And it's oh. the one that we talked about, about the government trying to ban uh, non-custodial wallets, which was a, which is a great video. I urge everybody to take a, a look at it, but any other laws coming in that could affect us as crypto users? No, I think the, uh, the the 1099 thing that I mean, we spoke about in the previous video, that's going to be huge when it gets finalized. Uh, the 6050i is going to be controversial as well. Uh, it hasn't been finalized or anything like that, that the law goes into effect January 1st, 2024. It does not mean that you have an obligation to report today because in order for a law to be effective, you had to have like regulations. 
meaning the IRS has to come and, you know, kind of update the forms and kind of give you the specific information. So it hasn't happened yet. Um, so, so you still have some time, time to kind of like, you know, figure out how to comply with the 6050i. But just to summarize, yeah, the, the, the 1099 stuff and the 6050i, those are kind of like the two crypto tax related rules that, that that's going to have a big impact on the industry. Gotcha. Excellent. So yeah, everybody, I will try to link this in the description. Uh, here was a video I was talking about. Look at that, 147K, excuse me. That was uh, just an impromptu video. So hopefully, hopefully, Sheehan, you get more uh, uh, followers for on your Twitter account. <laughs> All right, Sheehan, it's 540. I don't want to keep you. I know you got another, another meeting. But everybody, I'm going to stick around. We're going to talk about uh, this dump today that happens in the uh, market and go from there. Everybody, if you want to find Sheehan, there's a link in the description for his Twitter account. And of course, his link tree and everything is there. Sheehan, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for having me. See you. Guys. All right. See ya. All right, everybody. That was good stuff. Let's talk. Everybody's been talking about this. Let's just go over this real quick. And everybody knows why there's a dump today. I'm, I'm assuming because everybody and their mother was talking about this. It was just from one report from uh, Matrix Port where they said they this is their belief is why the SEC will reject the Bitcoin ETFs. And basically it, come down to, it came down to politics and why Gary wouldn't uh, approve it. And one of the things they said, which is what I, one, actually one of the things I said, which was uh, political, political divide. And they're right in this one instance where as far as like the commissioners, it's Gary, Caroline, and Jaime. And those are the three Democrats and Mark and Hester Pierce, crypto mom, they're both the Republicans and it looks like they mostly sided with Gary. So we'll see how it actually works out. But that was the reason for this dump today. I don't really care about dumps or pullbacks and things like that. What I do concern myself with is how this, I have never heard of matrix port ever. It's just amazing to me how one article can drop Bitcoin. I think it was by 10%. 45, it's quite a bit, 45 to 40. No, it wasn't 10%, 7% roughly. So that's the, the, the thing that, that concerns me. And of course, people say, ah, Rob, every, every market's manipulated. I know that's true. I mean, gold and precious metals, JP Morgan did that as well. And they got, they got busted for spoofing the markets. But uh, it concerns me that our market is, is controlled and manipulated that little bit for one stupid article that came out that says, hey, we think this is going to happen. And everybody lost their mind. So it's just a good lesson, I think, that uh, as we move forward, that stuff like that's going to happen. So I know people are like, well, I'm going to go long. I'm going to go short. I'm going to go on leverage. Did you see that coming? Did these leverage plays see it coming? No. The one they saw coming was an ETF potentially getting getting passed. I'm still on the fence about that one, but uh, that's why I have the rules on the side. But uh, of course, everybody can do what they want to do today. So look, everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Instead of subscribing, everything we talk about is time sensitive. That's it. And I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much. Adios.